everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of Coming Distractions brought to you by the Nerdpocalypse Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. Okay, guys, I'm back. Let's talk about The Matrix Resurrections. This is a spoiler-free review of The Matrix Resurrections. Um, this is the fourth Matrix movie. Um, this one uh, is starring, once again, Keanu Reeves, Carrie Ann Moss, um, newcomers to the franchise Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, and Jessica Henwick. So let me read what the premise of this is, and then we'll kind of jump right into it. Uh, 20 years after the events of the Matrix Revolutions, Neo lives a seemingly ordinary life under his original identity as Thomas A. Anderson in San Francisco. With a therapist who prescribes him blue pills to counteract the strange and unnatural things he occasionally glimpses. He also meets a woman who appears to be Trinity, but neither of them recognize each other. However, when a new version of Morpheus offers him a red pill and reopens his mind to the world of the Matrix, which has become more secure and dangerous in the years since the Smith inf infection, Neo joins a group of rebels to fight the new enemy. Um, okay, so again, no spoilers. So I'm going to try real hard to give my thoughts because I really don't want to give this away. I think uh, everybody should uh, check this out for themselves. Um, this, by the way, will be on HBO Max um, on the 22nd of December. So uh, that's an easy way to watch it if you do have HBO Max to stream it. Um, so, again, like the premise says, this picks up 20 years after the last Matrix movie. Um, and it's – you're clearly back inside the Matrix, right? Like the world is sort of this drab – drabish world uh that we're kind of used to seeing like in the original matrix it's a little brighter this time but all in all it's the same sort of um drab feeling um and thomas anderson he works at a he works at a particular place if i give that away it's, it's i feel like it's giving away too much but he works at this particular company and so he starts to kind of he obviously doesn't know he's he's back in the Matrix, but he starts to kind of have these glimpses of things and and he sees uh, who we know as Trinity in a coffee shop and he goes up and meets her. Her name is uh, Tiffany, I believe. And they they just instantly have this connection and he, he feels drawn to her um, and he doesn't really know why, right? Um, at that point, you get a a uh, younger looking Morpheus who comes up to him played by uh, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II. And he is like, look, I mean, he's doing all the, all the classic lines. Right. And it, and it feels weird, right? Like there's, there is sort of a play on that original scene with um, Trinity uh, in the beginning of the movie um, in the original where she's sitting in the room and the cops come in and, um, and like that's played, but then you're like, okay, this is slightly twisted with not like the right people and like what's quite going on. Um, and then, you know, here's this new version of Morpheus as, as, as we know him, like he looks new, he looks different. Um, it's obviously not Lawrence Fishburne. And that kind of sparks off Neo kind of getting pulled back into the matrix. Like I kind of read in the premise where the movie takes an interesting turn is what has happened to the real world and and what is going on with the matrix since the last time we saw neo and there are significant changes right um obviously the matrix still exists so the machine world still exists but there is a significant change in how humans have interacted with robots which i think is is um sort of telling if you go back and watch the third movie especially um which incidentally was my least favorite of the series um and so we get some characters and connections back to people in the original trilogy, which is kind of dope. Like, oh, okay. You know, but not too many of that. Like, not everybody is like, oh, you're the son of, oh, you're the daughter of, oh, you're the cousin of. Like, it's not like that, which is, which thankfully, like, that's good writing because you could easily very much fall into that for like, to just go for that sort of dopamine response uh, with nostalgia. Um there are some moments here once things like really get moving because it, it's a bit slow in the beginning, I, I will grant you. Um, but once things get moving and Neo sort of brought back into this understanding that the Matrix exists and this is why he's been feeling this way and sort of um, so on and so forth. Once it gets moving, it really moves at a clip all the way pretty much to the end. Um, 
like I said, there are some familiar faces um, presented in interesting ways, uh, which I liked. Um, some of the locales are similar, but I don't say that as sort of a retread of the original. It's not like it's bringing you back into the, this world, but in a but in a different way, right? Um, we see the idea of like how fast agents move and things like that, and you know the the sort of the rebellion kind of being afraid of them. Um, but there's another aspect to it that is that is introduced in this movie uh, of like. In the original trilogy, you have, like, the agents possessing people, and they can still do that. But there's another thing that um, the machines use as as a weapon um, in, inside the Matrix, which is really kind of cool to watch. Um, also slightly disturbing. So, you know, does it feel like the original? Yes, in a in a way, right? Not, not in a negative way. Um, is it better than the original? No, it's not. Is it better than the other sequels? Yeah, it is. Um, this one has a little bit more heart and a little bit more, um, not as much philosophy, but it's certainly like an introspective as to where the Matrix lives in the modern era of its sort of meta commentary, right? Like it had a lot of meta commentary in the original. Um, this one takes on some very familiar conversations in in the media today which i think is is clever and they work that in um in a smart way um all in all look keanu reeves is like back and like kicking ass like he still can do you know do the action beats and everything else uh pretty damn well obviously you know if you've watched the john wick movies you know he he he's slower as he's gotten older but he's still like he can still he can still pull off some pretty amazing stuff. So I really enjoyed him in this. It's great to just kind of be back in that universe. I recently rewatched the the first three, so it was just kind of dope to like all right, jump right in and like be put back in this world. Carrie Ann Moss um, also is is fantastic, and there's there's a bit of a there's a bit of a like a MacGuffin hunt to try to pull her back in as well. Um, again, I, I don't want to give uh, too much away here, but. Neo is desperately trying to reconnect with this woman that he loves. And that's not the end all be all of the story. There's, there's quite a lot going on, but, um, but it works. It super works. And you realize how much that franchise really hinges on the two of them and how well they work together. Like that, that's quite a large part of the narrative. They do, um, they do do an interesting, uh, way of explaining how, Neo and Trinity are back. Obviously, they both died in the um, the end of the original uh, trilogy in uh, Revolutions. So they do a good job of explaining how they get back. What is not explained very well, um, in my opinion, is exactly how Smith is back. Like, he kind of just is, and you're like, oh, all right, cool. But in a di- he's back in a different way. It's not, it's not as... Um, it's not... It's not what you would think, right? Um, but it's it's cool. And the explanation of Morpheus is really interesting. Um, it's actually probably my my uh, my favorite sort of twist and turn of it. Um, but the CGI looks great. The action beats are great. Um, again, the two leads are are awesome. Um, look, it's if you're if you're um if you're a fan of um, if you're a fan of that, uh, that's I'm trying to remember the name of that serial killer show um, that uh, Jonathan Groff is on, uh, Mind Hunters. Like he's great in this, um, so he's back. Neil Patrick Harris is in this. Like again, there's not as a lot of philosophy as I probably would have wanted um, from this, but it's there's enough there to keep you interested in the world. Do I know if they're going to make another Matrix? Like, does it feel like okay, we're getting five and six? You could, but if you left it at four, it would also make sense. Um, it, it feels it feels definitive, um, but there's still space if like people are really interested in this world um, to kind of come back and uh, really dig in. Um, and I wouldn't mind that. I, I would be okay with that. So in my opinion, I think it's the second best movie in the franchise. Um, long overdue. Um, it feels kind of good to be back in this universe. So. Um, I would probably say 
four, uh, three and a half out of five. Um, if I'm stretching a four and a four out of five, but probably a three and a half out of five. I enjoyed it. I think it's a good time. Don't let people spoil it for you. Check out uh, the Matrix Resurrections on HBO Max uh, or theaters. I think um, uh, if that's your only uh, way of seeing it, and we'll see you guys next time.